everybody welcome to another flea market finds episode this is a pick from a uh, tractor show this past fall the uh, Kennedy toolbox is an 11 draw and uh, I ended up getting this toolbox the gentleman had two other toolboxes they were regular seven draw Kennedy's um, and he allowed me to pick whatever I wanted out of those other two toolboxes and I put them in this box and bought this box with what was in it. For those of you who aren't familiar with the 11 draw, it's an unusually tall cabinet. Also, you had a key. So the only drawback about the 11 draw um, in some people's eyes is the fact that because the front cabinet door is so tall when you stow it it sticks out some people actually like this because it creates a little shelf here but if you've got this on top of a two draw riser and uh, or your roll away and you normally use that space on your roll away in the front here to put things down this kind of gets in the way small price to pay for having such a nice nice neat box this one's got some uh, white overspray paint on the top here otherwise and it's got a big dent right here otherwise it's in really great shape so not complaining about it all right so let's reposition the camera and we'll do the usual draw by draw unveiling of what treasures lurk inside this box so this one dent right here is really the only damage that I see on this thing and that's actually not too bad and I, I haven't even tried yet but I bet you I could bang that out from the inside and make it a little bit better and then, like I said, you can see it's got this white, I don't know what that is. First I thought it was white paint overspray, but I don't know what that is. And there's just a little bit of rust on the hardware, and that's actually from the box having been out overnight at the show and condensation sitting on it. All right, can't quite get the whole top of the box in the frame here, but got the little stare at 579 four piece hole gauges. These are the small hole gauges, 829s. This is a indicator. It's a little sticky. Uh, I'm, we'll get a better look at this in a minute because that's kind of interesting, caught my eye. This is a uh, Indicol style universal indicator holder so this is the knockoff says Chinese but it actually looks like it's complete with the box yes it is so Indicol is the original manufacturer and uh, everything else is a knockoff these he these weren't in the boxes these were a couple of the items that I added to the pile from off of his table. Um, this is a uh, folding rule. I believe it's a Stanley. Not a big money one. And then this is a small one, similar design. The high end ones of these, um, the sliding part here, instead of being brass, would be made out of ivory. Just being just a little assortment of uh, indicator, screw on indicator tips, small bowling bar. Ah, okay. This is a uh, edge finder, a little bit unusual design. There's a little stare at scriber, a long handled tap wrench. Here's a nice green field tap wrench. This is a uh, lathe drive dog for a small lathe. If you're turning between centers on a small lathe. Um, this is a staking set. I believe these are used by jewelers. So this is uh, kind of like a staking anvil. And then these are the staking tools. So I'll probably sell that to a clock or watch guy. Got a couple of uh, 
Parallel clamps, that's a sterret. That one, I'll have to clean it up to see if it's a sterret or not. And then a 178A radius gauge and the 178B radius gauge. Boxes are moldy. <laughs> and then this one's really moldy. It's really a moldy oldie here. This is a uh, old brown and sharp V-block original box that is nasty but I believe it's actually in there let's see if we can get this open yeah so looking kind of rusty but what's great is that it's the uh, correct set for the box so you know clean it up and it might be worth doing something with it. oh man that's nasty all right that's all that's left on the top let's uh, reposition the camera and look at the other draws Oh yeah, I promised a uh, better look at this indicator. So, uh, you know, regular drop indicator, which I've uh, had plenty of before, but it just seemed like it was really well made and it feels nice and heavy. And uh, I believe this might even be the original box for it. And yet, no maker on this thing. It's got more of a German manufacturer's look to it, and it is in millimeters. It's, uh, it says 1 over 100 mm, so 1 100th millimeters. It seems to work perfectly fine other than it's not returning on its own. That's probably just stickiness from sitting. All right, top draw on the right. Junk. Next draw down, pretty much empty. Next draw down, eh, pretty much empty. Next draw down, pretty much empty. Machinery handbook draw, also empty. Top left draw, pretty much empty. Although there are some of these tiny brass screws, those might be handy for. Oh, there's even some tiny hinges. Oh, well, that might be good for repairing some old boxes, indicator boxes and stuff. Next draw down. Well, we got some indicator mounting hardware. Yep. And some indicator tips, quite a few of them. Okay. And in here we've got mostly junk. Next draw down is empty. Next draw down is empty. Here we go. All right. So this is an uh, unusual little uh, doohickey here. This is a very small bench micrometer that is mounted inside of this wooden box. So I just put it in my pile because I thought it was kind of neat. And I think it's a brown and sharp. So apparently it's a brown and sharp 233. And it's a little bench micrometer. It's a tenths bench micrometer. So kind of a neat little novelty. It's got a ratchet thimble on it. I've never seen one. And we got a Mitotoyo uh, dial caliper. It actually is in really great shape. This, unfortunately, was missing the cover, but it's a uh, Sterrett uh, punch set. Uh, I think it's fairly complete, and the punches are pretty decent. And then there was this little uh, Collet box set. This is Collet set number 440, and then it goes on to say the Fordham Electric Company. So I believe this is for one of those cable drive um, power units for like uh, doing Dremel and stuff like that. All right, now, this wasn't all that was in this box. I've got another tote set aside that's full of stuff that was also part of this deal. So let me uh, clear this box out of the way and we'll get that up on the bench. This is pretty much the rest of what was uh, included in this deal. Um, got a uh, Mitotoyo disc or flange style micrometer. It uh, will probably need calibration it's not lining up 
unless the discs are dirty, of course, but, well. Uh, this is kind of a neat screwdriver. Uh, it's got a little removable cap with a little bit of rust on it, but unfortunately there's absolutely no maker's name on it, so I may never end up determining who, uh, who made this. It's just really well made. Oh, look at this. I didn't even realize that cap opened up. Oh, and there's a, <laughs> a nesting screwdriver set. We got a little tiny one here that nests inside of the next size, inside of the next size. That's that that makes it even more neat. There's even a super tiny one in the end of this one. That's not threaded, so it looks like that was never supposed to have a cap. So you end up with uh four sizes total here for the uh for this little set of screwdrivers so does anybody recognize that let me know in the comments a uh, nice little stare at square my mistake that's a union tool i just saw the athol mass real quick and it threw me off some stare at outside calipers this is a what either started out life as a Starrett precision screwdriver that was ground into a scriber or it's a scriber that has been well used and worn way down. That is a hook rule attachment that goes in the hole on the end of a small Starrett scale and turns it into a hook rule. Is a Starrett last word, probably a 7-Eleven. And it actually, true to form for the stare at last words, almost every one of these that I encounter still works. They seem to be a good design. A uh, little itty bitty stare at parallel clamp. A burr king. A burr quick. A little deburring tool, which I saw in the, uh, one of the drawers there, there were some extra bits for that. Here's a uh, box that was in here for a 81, um, sorry, 91A stare at tap wrench. Unfortunately, the tap wrench was not in here, but uh, chances are I have one that could use a box. This is a stare at 18B automatic center punch in excellent shape with the original box. This is a little um, Starrett screw pitch gauge. This is a little straight edge, kind of like a brown and sharp, completely unmarked. A couple of uh, nicely executed ground parallels. No maker's name on them, so I think they were uh, shop made, but they're really nice. A pair of uh, nice Starrett dividers toolmaker version with the round shanks and they're mint super sharp that's why it's got this protection on here some random uh, tool steel for lathes brand new old stock and this little guy nice little stare at 232 however it's been the tips have been ground to a fine point for some application but whoever did it did an excellent job because they look very good and uh, this thing is still holding within probably two-tenths resolution and it's supposed to be ratcheting but the ratchet is oh really crunchy so could use a new ratchet in excellent condition, these are uh, pretty pricey and rare, but this one being what it is, probably not going to be that valuable. And last, I wanted to, before I close out this video, I wanted to revisit this uh, edge finder that I found because uh, it caught my eye because it made me remember something, which was years ago I had one just like this that I had acquired, and, and it was completely unmarked, no maker's name. And I couldn't find uh, anything out about it because there was no name on it to Google it. And 
I ended up uh, selling it to one of my regular customers, probably pretty cheaply, like for 10 or 15 bucks. And then later, uh, I don't remember how I ended up coming across it, but accidentally I stumbled across information about the fact that Herman Schmidt, the famous precision vice and fixture manufacturer, uh, at one point in their history, they offered a edge finder. And I believe that this may very well be a Herman Schmidt. And I'm pretty sure the one that I gave away dirt cheap was a Herman Schmidt. This one has been engraved. Um, oddly enough, it's, uh, it's engraved kind of crudely. Probably by the owner. And I'm guessing this is his nickname, Sawbuck. <laughs> so kind of a funny old timey nickname there, Sawbuck. So the story on these edge finders is that back in the day, I guess they could be purchased for around uh, like 40 bucks from Herman Schmidt. And that was kind of pricey for, you know, compared to like what the Starrett version of this was. And there are still debates today by people who say that this is one of the finest edge finders that was ever made. That their experience has been that when this touches off, it kicks out much more dramatically and further than other models there's all kinds of theories as to why that is some people say it's because of the larger diameter and the larger larger mating areas here uh, some people say it's just because that these surfaces were precision lapped as opposed to just being ground as same with the edge uh, the surface here I, I don't know all I know is that I'm probably gonna end up keeping this one for myself um, because I, you know, I don't have one from uh, Herman Schmidt. But now, if you find a good, clean, used one on eBay, they trade for crazy money, like you know, well over fifty bucks, well over what they they cost you. So you can't order them anymore. I, I actually saw a f forum post where somebody had explained that they had called the company and they were informed that uh, they no longer offer a uh, edge finder in their product line. And I even saw another post that uh, somebody was claiming that the story behind it is that the, the gentleman who worked at Herman Schmidt who was making these passed away, and that's why they weren't doing them. And then there's another story about how Fisher Products out in California, which is still in business, that and, and making edge finders, at, at one point they offered a knockoff of this, uh, this same similar design. But I checked their website and looked at all the edge finders they currently offer, and they don't offer anything like this now. So I think maybe they're no longer offering that style either. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, and this is just uh, another set of uh, Starrett center punches. I haven't even gone through to see if they're all Starrett's or whatever, but that's it. All right, so that's it. That's going to close out this episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Take care.